last but not least, um, I'd call on Dr. Sandra Collins, the Director of the National Library of Ireland, who's going to speak to us about collecting the Irish experience of COVID-19. So over to you, Sandra. That's brilliant. Thanks very much, Fiona. Great. Okay, so thank you to Cahill and the Newt University Library for the invitation to speak and for organising this really excellent initiative, which is um, just, just, just at the right time. The National Library is closed to the public at present because of COVID-19, but we'll be reopening our doors on July the 20th. We're in phase four of the government's roadmap for reopening. And while we're closed, we've been delivering our public services online. But we've also been working behind the scenes to collect the Irish experience of COVID-19. So I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to talk about what we've been doing. The national collections include many personal and public memories, giving us insights into different aspects of Irish life. Our collections include exceptional diaries and journals and letters, including this letter, which is one of a series exchanged between James Joyce and W.B. Yeats and shows their relationship over 24 years of literary friendship. Letters are often a wonderful resource to understand ordinary and day-to-day -day life, especially during exceptional times in our history. If you think of World War I, the Civil War, and now today, COVID-19. This is an extraordinary and tumultuous period in our lifetime. And although we think we might never forget it, of course we will, and future generations won't have lived our shared experience. In March, we contacted the Ryan Tuberty Show after Ryan had asked children from across the country to write to him, describing their lives during COVID-19. Ryan received hundreds of letters and we suggested adding this archive into the national collections. It's important to capture children's experience of this time in their own voices. Ryan's been sharing some of the letters on Instagram if you've seen them. Keane's letter here tells us that he's eight years old, but he can't have a birthday party and he hates the virus and he misses his friends and grandparents. He's cycling with his family every day and his mammy says the virus is making her fat, but Keane thinks it's the chocolate. We're also very grateful to Newsbrand, who are the representative body for newspapers in Ireland, and Professor Michael Foley, who organised and donated a COVID-19 archive of student writing. The 600 competition entries provides a unique insight into how our teenagers are handling the crisis. So some deeply personal stories, along with their views on everything from how the government is performing, the dreaded leaving cert, how they're filling their time and what they expect society to be like at the end. Allow me to read you the beginning of the junior winning entry by Tiernan Finn, who's in second year in St. Joseph's in Ballinasloe. He says, it's the new silence that I hear the most. The trucks that I used to fear cycling to training are fewer now, but there's no training and meeting with my friends either. I miss that messing, running, laughter and playing with my team and winning, losing and trying. I miss the mud, exhaustion and the goodies in the club or the chicken fillet roll from the deli on the way home. We're also adding to our ephemera collections, and that's all the printed pamphlets, booklets and notices distributed to the public during um, COVID-19. And we're adding into that one of the unpost postcards that everybody received. It was such a lovely initiative to encourage people to keep in touch while staying apart. So all those paper items will go into the national collections. And we're also working during this time to ensure that we continue all our normal collecting of books, newspapers, publications and serials so that we collect those aspects of Irish life which are not only related to COVID-19. To date, we've contacted 133 newspaper publishers, publishers to establish if they're still publishing during this time. And they are 
a small number of newspapers, less than six, are suspending print editions in favour of, of online. We've asked the publishers to continue to post copies of the newspapers and where they can't do that, we're asking them to keep copies for us to retrieve after the restrictions allow. Similarly, for all Irish book publishers and also for books by non-Irish publishers, but that are of interest to Ireland. And we're doing this to prevent any gap in the national collections due to COVID-19. I know there's bags and bags and bags of post waiting for us when we all return on site. Of course, much of our contemporary record occurs online in digital format. An example is photography, which is really largely digital nowadays. So we've partnered with the Gallery of Photography Ireland to capture and preserve a photographic record of Irish life during COVID-19. It's called the Mass Isolation Project and its sharing experiences of the COVID-19 pandemic through photography. So you can see some of the photos here. The Gallery of Photography Ireland have invited people to share photos of their own personal experiences during the pandemic on Instagram. The project then is an evolving democratic archive being created and captured in real time. And the National Library of Ireland will preserve the Mass Isolation IRL Instagram project as part of our COVID-19 web archive collection. I'm sure those photos ring some bells for everyone. I know the toilet paper and the hair clippings certainly ring a bell. So let's talk a little bit about the National Web Archive at the NLI. We first archived the Irish Web in 2007 and we've been selectively archiving Irish websites since 2011. The internet is an important record of contemporary life because we use it every day to convey and to find information. But the internet is also ephemeral. Within a year of publication, up to 50% of online re resources are gone or unrecognisable. They have changed so much. And if we don't collect this digital material now, it will be lost forever. Already so much of the 21st century is gone from our recorded memory. So we've been collecting government websites and we've also partnered with the Department of Health to capture all the digital artwork for COVID-19. This is the gov.ie website and I don't think we will ever forget that shade of yellow. We're also collecting the websites of the higher education institutions, including Maynooth University, our kind hosts for this event here today. And we've collected the websites of trade unions who are an important part of the national conversation about the impact of COVID-19 on jobs across the country. In keeping with our policy of diversity and inclusion, we're also collecting the websites of vulnerable or disadvantaged groups. These are groups that often suffer more during times of adversity. This is the website of Belong To, who are a national organisation supporting lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex young people in Ireland. For some LGBTI plus young people, home may be a stressful environment, so COVID-19 restrictions could be even more challenging. We've collected Irish traveller websites. This is the Pave Point website. And it includes public health advice, traveller experience and resources tailored for the community. And we've also collected websites related to domestic violence. This is Safe Ireland website and again COVID-19 restrictions can exacerbate um, dangerous situations for women and children who are in unsafe homes. So we wanted to make sure to add this into the national collections and the national memory as well. So as well as our curatorial team selections, we opened a public call for recommendations to add to the National Web Archive. So we're encouraging people to recommend websites that they think are an important part of the Irish memory during this time. 
We're collecting around 200 individual websites for our COVID-19 web archiving and you can find the first harvest online now on the NLI website. This is what it looks like. So the National Library has been carrying out web archiving on a selective basis since 2011. In 2017, we carried out a full domain crawl of the entire Irish web space. Domain web archiving includes the crawling, the archiving and the preservation of websites, all the websites that are part of the national domain. For us in Ireland, that includes about 300,000 .ie domains and 1,000 websites hosted outside of Ireland and about 1,700 Irish language websites. Unfortunately, current copyright legislation doesn't support us in either collecting or making available the Irish web. And we think this is an important resource for everybody to have access to. So we're doing all that we can to work to change this. And then to say, of course, that the National Library is not the only institution collecting during COVID-19. There are also projects underway in the National Museum, Trinity College is living under lockdown, and the Tipperary Public Library's children's projects, and more. And what this means is that we should have a rich and varied record of the Irish experience of COVID-19 preserved for future generations. I'm finishing now with a photo of the NLI's main reading room. We miss it very much while our services are closed, the physical services. And to acknowledge that libraries across the country will be making changes to their buildings and their processes to follow public health advice during COVID-19. And it's a call to all our libraries to record and document those changes too. We're going to be doing that in the National Library and it's a part of our sectoral memory of this um, pandemic. Thanks very much.